we would do these experiments on these little, what are called Siberian hamsters. If you give melatonin to a male Siberian hamster, its testes go from the size of standard marbles to the size of a grain of rice within a week. Wow. And the females, their ovaries involute. Stop fear-mongering melatonin. I have heard an increasing number of people say that melatonin doesn't have any long-term safety data, that it's unsafe because it's a hormone, or that it's habit-forming. I'm Aviva Carter, MD-PhD candidate, and I will go over the research to show you that not only is melatonin as safe as any supplement can be, but it has incredible health benefits beyond its minor effects on sleep. Minor effects? Yeah, we'll get to the effects on sleep, but sleep isn't even melatonin's primary role in our body. It's estimated that less than 5% of the melatonin we produce is even made in the pineal gland at all. Melatonin, you see, is one of life's most powerful antioxidants. It exists in unicellular algae, bacteria, plants, and molds, none of which have any brains and they don't sleep, at least not like we do. Like us, other organisms make melatonin for a variety of reasons, but the big one is to protect themselves from oxidative stress. For example, plants that are exposed to more UV radiation typically produce more melatonin, presumably to protect themselves, like a sunscreen. And melatonin is amphiphilic, meaning that it can go anywhere in the body. And it's especially good at getting to the place where most of our reactive oxygen and nitrogen species are produced as a byproduct of energy production, the mitochondria, where, due to the double cell wall, many other antioxidants can't get in. In fact, in one study, melatonin outperformed the two synthetic antioxidants designed specifically to get into the mitochondria. This is important because mitochondrial dysfunction and oxidative stress is one of the primary mechanisms of human aging. The antioxidant capacity is thought to be why melatonin has been implicated in the prevention of cognitive decline, the prevention of skin aging, neural protection, and cardio protection. Such as a human clinical trial showing that melatonin protects the heart after aortic aneurysm repair. And topically, melatonin has been shown to increase hair density and to prevent sunburn, reduce cell death, and reduce the amount of DNA damage after UV exposure, just like in plants. But that's not all. Melatonin is also a potent anti-inflammatory agent, reducing markers of chronic inflammation in a multitude of human clinical trials, with doses ranging from one milligram to 100 milligrams, all with excellent safety profiles. For example, melatonin was shown to benefit patients hospitalized for septic shock, improve jaw pain in patients with TMD, improve pelvic pain in patients with endometriosis, and abdominal pain in patients with IBS. Likewise, oral melatonin has been shown to improve symptoms of eczema in children. Melatonin may also improve metabolic health. There are studies that have shown that melatonin reduced cholesterol, blood pressure, and fasting insulin levels. One study found melatonin reduced systolic blood pressure by an average of 12.3 millimeters of mercury, and another showed it reduced it by nine. For comparison, one meta-analysis found that prescription ACE inhibitors reduced systolic blood pressure by 14.3. Melatonin's getting close. The melatonin blood pressure studies have small sample sizes, so don't go throwing away your BP meds for melatonin. But it could be a beneficial add-on, especially because melatonin has been shown to reduce the toxicity of various pharmaceutical drugs due to its antioxidant capacity. Okay, so I see that there are some significant benefits to melatonin beyond sleep, but melatonin is a hormone. Doesn't it mess with the hormone system? What about testosterone in men? Good question. Hormone just means long distance signaling molecule. There are all sorts of hormones. The term doesn't mean it has anything to do with sex hormones necessarily. Fear mongers. Often cite studies in animals like Siberian hamsters. What are called Siberian hamsters. But they're so-called long day breeders, different from humans and most animals in that their mating practices are intimately tied to how long the day is. They only mate in the summer months when the day is long. One way their bodies know that it's time to breed is because light from the long days suppresses melatonin. But humans don't have this mechanism. We mate with each other all year long. They also ignore studies in other animal models like rams, where melatonin has been shown to increase testosterone. And worst of all, they talk about these studies like we don't already have human trials. But we do, and in two separate human trials, melatonin showed no decrease in testosterone. And anecdotes are not evidence, but I've been taking melatonin since I was a teenager, and this is my testosterone and it's fine. Some may even say good for someone who's going through the stresses of medical education. Furthermore, melatonin has been shown to have protective effects on sperm outside the body. And except for a single anomalous study in 2002, melatonin has been interesting in the research as a molecule that may increase both male and female fertility. So melatonin may reduce oxidative stress, lower blood pressure, lower cholesterol, reduce inflammation and pain, reduce symptoms of IBS, protect the heart and brain, 
protect the skin from UV when applied topically and hypothetically delay aging, but most people still take it for sleep, right? Yes, but in that role, it's not what most people think either. It's not a sedative like benzodiazepines or Ambien. It doesn't knock you unconscious, it regulates your circadian rhythm. Sort of like letting your body know that it's time for sleep without reducing your mental faculties like sedatives do. For example, in one clinical trial, when patients with insomnia were given melatonin, it reduced the time it took them to fall asleep from 20.6 to 13.7 minutes, which is 6.9 minutes faster compared to 1.7 minutes faster in the placebo group. And the results are similar among the numerous clinical trials on melatonin real and statistically significant results, but they aren't exactly game-changing. Okay, but I still don't want to become addicted or dependent on a pill for sleep. That's the best part about melatonin. Even though the effect size isn't huge, it's non-sedating, non-addictive, and doesn't appear to have tolerance. In fact, studies show that after stopping melatonin, patients sleep better than baseline before the study, possibly because they've corrected their internal clock. Okay, this sounds great, but I've heard there are no long-term studies on melatonin. So why did I stop? Because we know very little about the long-term use of melatonin. But there are. Such as this double-blind placebo-controlled trial that had patients with insomnia on two milligrams of prolonged release melatonin for 29 weeks. They found that melatonin remained effective for the entire study period and that there were no treatment-related side effects relative to placebo. 29 weeks? That's just over like six months. People take melatonin for years. Yes, I see what you're saying. It would be nice to have a placebo-controlled trial that ran for decades, but this just isn't done. Six months is pretty standard for long-term safety studies. To compare, we can look at diabetes medicines, which patients are expected to be on for life. The blood sugar-lowering metformin was approved for long-term use after a 29-week study, and epagliflozin was approved after a 24-week study. Now getting back to sleep drugs, Ambien was approved after only a short 35-day study. It's not meant for long-term use, but we know how that goes with addictive substances. This is about as good long-term data as you will ever find for a supplement, and really on par with the level of evidence required for a pharmaceutical drug. Actually, given the evidence for safety and efficacy of melatonin, the European Union approved two milligrams prolonged release melatonin as brand name Circadin in 2007 for insomnia. And as usual, I linked the melatonin product that I use in the description, but that doesn't mean I think melatonin is right for everyone. While melatonin is about as safe as it gets for a supplement, anything that works to change your physiology will have side effects in some people. To get more objective about it, check out this paper summarized on the FDA website going over possible side effects. The most common being a 1.66% prevalence of daytime sleepiness compared to placebo. This and other sources for this video are listed on abibacarter.com and always talk to your doctor before making any changes. Now, there is always a lot of diversity in how we respond to things, so it's valid if melatonin affects you negatively. However, melatonin has so many potential benefits, improving sleep and beyond relative to its safety, and has been studied so well compared to almost any other supplement that the fear-mongering has to stop. Stop trying to get attention by scaring people about a popular and effective supplement that so many of us take. The evidence in context does not support it. And unless something really surprising is published, I'll be taking melatonin for the rest of my life.